Hello, hello, we're sitting here with two of the members of Lady Jack. Um, they're going to introduce themselves. I'm Rick Stitch. Justin Smallian. Speaks, I didn't know his last name, but there we go, it's the big S on the buckle. You can't really miss it. <laughs> Smallian? No. I know now. Thank you for clearing that up. Here's the first question How did you guys meet? Just to go through. Add on Craigslist. Nice. Yeah. Who placed it? You? Uh, I think Rubble placed it. Yeah, the guitar player. Okay. What, it, does it say anything interesting? Um, I, you know, I was just going through looking for a band, and um, they had all the same influence as me, and I checked out their website and heard the songs, and I was like, this is my vibe. Yeah. So I hit him back and did the audition. Now we're here. <laughs> nice. How long ago was that? I actually met them about a year ago, and then this this guy left on tour with Adler. And got back a couple months ago, and now we've been right. pushing it. Nice. So you have a fairly big rock pedigree because you've just finished with Stephen Adler's band, but now you're with Lady Jack, your project, mm -hmm. which you are a pretty damn good vocalist. I have to say. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's I don't I don't find very many that I like, but you do good old rock and roll, but with a lot of new heart. It's good to hear new stuff because you don't hear very many rock and roll songs anymore. It could be um, a it could be a product of being a product of the 90s, you know, loving the 80s so much, and then like big influences like Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, Nirvana, yeah. you know, combined it, combined with the 80s stuff, you know. Did you go and see Chris Cornell the last couple of nights? Here? I saw him. I didn't see him the last time, but I did see him when he played the Roxy. He did a charity event, and uh, I was blown away. He's one of my all-time favorites, and to be at a setting where there wasn't that many people there. Um, and just to see him do his thing, you know, just yeah. so casual. And he even pulled up a kid from the audience. He's like, "Do you play?" And kid came up and played. I think, "Fell on Black Days." And it was just so awesome. You want to think maybe that wasn't planned. Maybe it was planned, but it sure as hell looked like it just <laughs> happened, you know. And it was great. And, um, yeah. you are described as contradictions and transformations. Rock and roll. What does that mean? Uh, trying. Uh, not you, your songs, I guess. Oh, um, well, it's it's always, you know, trying new things and doing the opposite of what is expected, you know, and I think, I think, you know, having that, that, it's an 80s influence, but that classic rock, you know, influence, and then, you know, he's, no, no, he's already posing already. Man, taking pictures of the, these hot girls walking by, I like it. Be <laughs> <laughs> sure to email us those later. <laughs> Crew does have a tendency to get distracted at things <laughs> like this, and we are in what North Hollywood yeah. Studio City. How rude! That's the real reason why we're here. This is where uh, we come to watch the ladies. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and next time you said you're going to bring your guitar, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> and a drum kit, and I have like a PA set up. Oh yeah. Um, okay. Anyways, uh, did you meet all the rest of? Because you're a quartet, right? Yeah. yeah. A new quartet with you. You're the addition. I am the addition. How'd you meet the other guys? I think it was sort of the same way. It was just the ads. I mean, I, I'm not exactly sure how we met our drummer because we put out so many ads everywhere. Like when <laughs> people still flyered and stuff and put postings on walls and stuff yeah. like that. You know, we did. Um, but it was the same thing through. It was, it was probably Craigslist. The same thing. He came in and um, with Paul. I mean, I gave him some of the songs we had, but I also gave him some songs that had a lot of like program drum beats and stuff. Yeah. Like stuff that was kind of like not really what a drummer would play. And he came in and learned it all, and that was kind of like my audition for him in my mind, like, see if he can do all this stuff, you know, and not all the guys did it, and he came in and did all this stuff. I was blown away. I nice. was like... So he's a keeper? He's definitely a keeper, yeah. You just did a show, is that at the Viper Room? We like did, yep. Day? That was uh, the 22nd, I believe. How did that go? It was great. We're actually doing another one again on June 3rd. Nice. And that show, I believe, it'll be uh, streamed live. So awesome. I'll have to get you guys info for that. We're still working on the details, but... We can put all that underneath yeah. all the information. So at the moment you had this self-titled EP. It's got six songs on it. My favorite's Johnny Get Your Gun. But my other favorite is one that you have a video of. Is it called Make It Right? That's correct, yeah. And it's so simple and it's so beautiful. You and a guitar, black and white. How did that come about? How come that's not on here, by the way? That's, uh... That's one song that, you know, it never really made it into the set of the band. Um, it was just more like, yeah, I think so. I think it was more, it wasn't a collaboration with anybody. 
and um, I, f I feel as more a singer-songwriter, you know, and at the time when Lady Jack first got started, we were very heavy rock and roll fast, and it just never fit, you know, and then yeah. Justin joined the band, it was... I made them play the song. I heard it, I'm like, we're playing the song. <laughs> <laughs> so you have played it as a... We band? have, and now it's like, it's just one of the songs we, ha we have to have in the set. It was just the reaction, you know, I, I think we were more, weren't sure how it was going to translate. Every band needs a song for the yeah. ladies. Well, now it's, that ties into what we're doing now is we're actually tracking um, all the new stuff we've written, um, and that will be on it. And Yay! we're sh and we're shooting the video video for that as well. We're actually shooting um, kind of like a live DVD. So we we have penned a few of the songs that we're going to do for it. That's definitely one of them. Yeah. It's actually going to be at a friend's house in the hills. She's got a nice little setup. You know, we'll have a little live audience, and it'll be live. There's no overdubs, no nothing like. We're gonna run through it a few times, and what you get is what you get. It'll be flaws, mm. and there'll be hopefully there'll be some greatness, you know. Most of the stuff I've seen, especially of you, because there's not so many on YouTube and stuff of you as a band yet, but you seem to do everything pretty well live. You come across just as well on CD and. I think I think for us though, it's like the live thing. You know, bands ultimately want to recapture that in the studio, and a lot of times it doesn't you happen. Can't. You have these cooler versions that are well, this is really great, but. How many times have we done demos, you know, or I've done demos of my track and then you go in the studio and you're like, well, something's missing here, and it's like, yeah. it was that moment, you know? So I think for us, when you have the four of us in a room together, even when we're rehearsing, it's, yeah. you feel the, the, the chemistry that we have together, you know, and it's, that's why when we go to record, we try to, well now, we try to just track as much live possible, and if I have to go back in now and record a harmony or something, you know, yeah. or do a little punch in, you know? So You've already got this one out that people can get everywhere. Um, when can we expect your new one? A new depending on how, DVD? depending on on how long it takes to mix. I mean, we're pretty sufficient when it comes to tracking. Um, in a month, about a month's time, we'll be tracking everything and filming. It'll kind of be going at the same time, so you'll be able to go online, watch the DVD stuff, yeah. um, and then you'll be able to download um, studio versions as well. So hopefully, realistically, maybe two months. Yeah, you'll have it. Yeah. And you've had the whole Stephen Adler thing. Gilby Clark helped you produce this one, or was it from well, your demos? Well, or? with this, um, we had demos, and we went and tracked with Gilby, and um, things were going great, you know. And um, he ended up, unfortunately, he got in a really bad motorcycle accident. Mm -hmm. Actually, not too far down the street. Um, and uh, Gilby bounced back. He's doing better. But with that, and then I started playing with Stephen. It was like everything. Timing just got thrown off, you know. Yeah. Any future collaborations that you would love to work with, or either songwise or Chris uh, Cornell? I shout would out. obviously, I would, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, for me, I would love to work with him. But I think at this point, it'd be great to do something just opposite. You know, I mean, I've I've had, for me personally, I've always had a big thing with electronic music. Wow. More like I want to say like techno, but more industrial stuff. Maybe like Rob Zombie. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. And for me, I think that'd be great. You know, I've like. Outside of this, I work with like hip hop artists. I work with dance artists. I do a lot of that. So you're a producer as well. I, I do, as well, yeah. Okay. And um, for me, what about you? Um, I mean, especially with me joining this band, I'm trying to like incorporate a lot more groove into it and like just things that people will, like want to. I don't want to say dance to, but like you know, can move their bodies to. Yeah. You know, because I I'm definitely you know I came from the same background as loving Guns N' Roses and all that stuff, but I'm also largely influenced by punk music yeah. and R&B too, just being a bass player, like yeah. I, I love Prince and I'm trying to... Jamiroquai is a good one too. Jamiroquai I was big on them. Oh yeah. And it's just trying to like incorporate that into it too because that's a big part of what's going on today too. Yeah. We don't want to just be reproducing what's happened before, we want to do something new. Yeah. That's really important to us. And that's still part of the rock and roll thing, it's just making it a new, mm -hmm. a new facet, introducing something. Yeah. So it's good that the rest of your band knew that you wanted to go that stream. Yeah, the in the beginning it wasn't always that easy. I know, <laughs> uh, especially with Robo, wherever you are. Um, <laughs> I hope he's not in the ditch or something bad. I'd feel really bad. Um, he's but I love you, brother. supposed to be here, but he's not here? No, he had, I don't know what he's doing. Oh. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but he's all right. He's, he should be good. Okay. He should be. As long as he's not in a ditch. <laughs> yeah. I know with him in the beginning, he's always like, I would try to make it more modern. I'm like, no, man, it's got to be more like Zeppelin and more like Guns. Yeah. And to me, like, those are both great bands, and we all love them. But I was always like, yeah, but I don't want to just reproduce that. Let's try to capture 
yeah. that essence and bring it into something new, you know, and it's tough because you don't want to just be like a trendy band and then next week you're out. You want to make Thomas music. I think that's everybody's goal. And I think with going the classic rock route, you can write a ballad that hopefully will stand the test of time, but you also don't want to just regurgitate what's already been done, you know, and I think now I th we're at that point where it's naturally starting to happen instead of going, hey, we should do this. It's like you find when we're jamming that, hey, yeah. all right, everything is starting to sound like we were, we were picturing, you know. Well, it sounds that now you're full time with Lady Jack and you have time to concentrate yeah, on this project. Yeah, it's just a nice feeling, you know. It's like I was telling you uh, before, you know, um, it's great touring and that was a great time, but we're, we're not a large, widely established band where yeah. we can support ourselves while I'm on the road or while you're on the road, you know, like we still have to beat the pavement down, you know, so yeah. uh, me coming back and being able to focus on it is great, you know, and it's, you know. So you've got one show planned at the Viper, anything <laughs> well, else? Not one big show. <laughs> the huge show. There's Any more things that people can look for you guys or? Um, I mean, there's more shows and tours. We're working on a European tour. Um, oh, you are? That was a, yeah, that was a positive thing, doing the other thing. It, it, it did, you know, open up a lot of doors in well, a lot of years. You definitely picked up interest from a lot of people. For sure, out there, you know, and that was a great thing. And I think that was part, part of doing this kind of style, that rock. Yeah. We're able to open that door and then bring in the new sound, you know, like, and not completely lose people. Because, you know, people, what I find is that people like to feel familiar with it you yeah. know they're already like well I already kind of heard this you know but there's something new about it so no. I think um, Europe is gr uh, great for that especially the rock scene I mean I was blown away by the fans out there like singing the, the lyrics and everything and the heavier the music the harder yeah, the fans yeah it's just well. put the passion in it you know it's difficult being in LA cause it's like a lot of people just kind of yeah. it's a tough crowd to break um, but I mean you you work it out here you know what I mean and then you know, I think Europe will be a great thing. It's just working all the details going over there. And is there um, an ish kind of timeline for that, or we're like October? Or yeah, oh, working wow. on October, and it, it, I mean, it's not, not gonna be anything crazy like a two or three months de month deal. It might be two, three weeks, you know. That's But cool. I mean, that's I mean that's enough for us to get out there and do what we need to do. Can you please come to New York yeah. as well? Well, that's more feasible actually. <laughs> we could probably do that next weekend. You wanna book us a gig out there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually. What I do sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So yes. Well, we got your contact info, so. No worries. <laughs> well, what's the date of the Viper Room show again? That'll be June 3rd. Yeah. Okay. And we look forward to seeing much more from Lady Jack and Rick Stitch and his cronies. Yeah. Thank Call you. Crony now. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, boys. It's been a pleasure. You're not a crony. You're a proper one. You know yeah. what I mean. He's got, the, he's got the best hair in the band. So he's got that going for him. There you go. And the belt buckle too. <laughs> and penis. Oh. And the boots. Can we show the boots? Who, who, what are they called? Oh, oh, rock, rock and roll. roll. That oh, is what. Boots, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's my toes. You can see stick This is actually why people come to our shows because of that. Yeah. To buy him <laughs> some new boots. If there's any hot girls. Oh, one last oh, question. Yeah. How did the Vixen video hunt go? Still working. Still working on that. Nice. There's a lot of lot of things. Auditioning ladies. Yeah. Well, I think I, th I think a lot of it. I think a lot. Yeah, right. You're like his, his cell phone numbers have gone. The list has grown. No, but it's even even with something like that. Like you start off with something so simple, and then legalities and details and all that stuff. It, it turns out into a bigger legal thing. Legal ages. No, no, no. That's, that's fine. No, that's kind of been an issue a couple of times. <laughs> well, not with me. <laughs> what? What are you trying to paint a picture? You're the crony. Get out of here. <laughs> no, I mean we're still we're still shooting that, and it's also like the script for the video and everything. You know, like certain things still need to happen, but I mean that's still going to yeah. happen. You know, and and after that, Do you that's need to more. Pitch that again. If any hot young LA ladies looking for a video spot, they can go online. Yeah, the next next video vixen dot com. Um, check it out. Okay. But I think we've already narrowed it down to a few, and now it's just getting everything finalized and going with it, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. So, so we've got videos, tours. Yeah, we would like to do music. another one of those as well. I mean, the con the response we got was great. I think we could do something even bigger. It's a good way and to do it. And it's a learning experience from the first time we did it, you know? Yeah. So now, we'll do better. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Les. It's been thank a pleasure.